high, it's lowest from no cruise control. I'm actually on board Morella Explorer in the moment. This is our junior suite. Um, sweet tour and vlogs of this cruise will be coming soon. But I realised I've been very lucky and had three cruises in quick succession. And um, and then obviously I've had to pack in like work and the on-call aspect of my work within those times off. Um, so didn't have time to like uh, vlog disembarkation. I need to get into a habit of doing it, uh, you know, I don't know when I get home or something from a cruise, but um, yeah, so I thought I'd just talk briefly, it's only going to be a short video, about disembarkation on Scarlet Lady. So disembarkation was a dream. I mean, it has been on all these cruises so far this summer. I guess it's because getting off the ship, you don't have to do testing, so it's much quicker, obviously. And also because there's a lot less people on the ships, I think that makes it a lot more efficient and quick. But also, cruise lines are efficient, you know, they, they know how to get a load of people on and a load of people off quickly and safely. But yeah, Scarlet Lady, so the disembarkation information sort of dropped onto the app um, and you're able to read. You could have pre-booked a disembarkation group. Um, I had booked 10.45, which was the last one, because I thought in my head, well, the last day will be quieter and I can go around and take photos if I haven't for the rest of the, the cruise. Um, so yeah, I had the last disembarkation book group booked and because I had Monday off work and there was no, like, no one was picking me up from Portsmouth, I was getting the train back to London, I thought I could just have a relaxing morning and that I did. It was nice. So there didn't seem to be a set time you had to leave your, your cabin by, but I mean, I didn't leave late, to be honest. Um, in my head, I'm like every other cruise line, generally it's like eight o'clock, isn't it? So I thought it's only fair to leave then because this lady needs to make up the cabin for the next people. Um, yeah, so I got up, had a bit of a lie-in, um, got up and then went to the wake for my brunch, which was delicious. I really thought, because the only two venues open, so obviously the galley with all the different eating places was open and there was also information to say that the wake and Razzle Dazzle would be open. Now when I was on for the world launch with Dave, um, we went to Razzle Dazzle for lunch on our last day, so I thought well I'll go to the wake this time and I'd already had brunch at the wake before, so it was delicious and I was like I'm happily go for that again. <laughs> um, so yeah I went to the wake and it was really quiet, I thought it'd be busy but it wasn't. So I had, I don't know, I didn't feel, it was early, like 8.30, 9, I didn't feel, I don't know, to have the whole three courses on my, sat on my own there, felt a bit greedy, so I ended up just having the steak and eggs. <laughs> um, didn't have the starter or the dessert, had a um, pan au chocolat, which was very nice, and yeah. I had tea, which is weird. I don't think when I go on Valiant Lady, I'll be ordering tea um, in the wake. I literally was given a tea bag and then about 10 minutes later given a cup of hot water. I don't like it's fine, made tea. And I mean, there was no chance of milk. Um, I think they were just busy because it was the last day. And to be honest, I'm happy to have my hot drinks, black or white, I'm not fussed. Um, but yeah, I think I'll have coffee in future. They seem to have coffee in a in a um, in a big jug to take round. Tea seemed to be the difficult option, so I don't want to be difficult. And <laughs> to be honest, I don't preference tea over coffee anyway. Um, but yeah, disembarkation then was a dream. So after the brunch, after brunch and after the wake, I went to sit in the roundabout for a bit and just sort out through my pictures and just check if I had any other um, places I wanted to photograph. Um, there's a few people dotted around, but the ship was generally really quiet. Then, at about an hour before my disembarkation time, I just thought, do you know what, I just want to go home now. I just want to, like, crack on with editing things and um, I'm washing for the next cruise. Um, so, yeah, I, I went to see if I could get off and, basically, you go to Sailor Services and buy Razzle Dazzle. Um, no, it was more by Pink Argarve, actually. And it was literally like, you ready to get off? Okay, swipe off, off you go. <laughs> that was it. Um, no queue whatsoever. I had my little case with me. I didn't put, I had it, I checked it in coming on and the case got to the cabin before me. But I um, took it off myself just for ease of being quick. But when I got off and went 
so we all got off um, the ship well we'll say we all there wasn't many people I got off I was taking photos of the ship and a very kind man I think he clocked my panache cruises bag which panache cruises kindly gifted me just because I've ordered tens of thousand pounds worth of cruises with them um, and he thought I worked for them, I think, because he was like, oh, you need a picture with the ship. And I was like, well, it'd be nice to have a picture with the ship, but I don't need one, but oh, thank you. And he was like, let me take your photo. So I was like, oh, thank you. I was like, I don't need to see a photo of me, though I know what I look like. He was like, no, no, we must. You need to have. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I can't argue with you. Um, so yeah, I'll put the picture up. He very kindly took photos of the ship with me. Um, and then he was like, you can use those for your company. I was like, oh, I don't, I don't have a company. It's like, oh, what's your bag? And I was like, oh, I'd be given that as a freebie. Um, and then he kind of was like, oh, <laughs> but bless him. I was like, oh, I'm very grateful, thank you. Um, then I went on a, a bus. I was gonna say coach, it wasn't a coach, it was a bus. Like the airport buses, like that. And then it drove us up to Portsmouth Cruise Terminal. Um, um, yeah, big, huge UK border thing. I mean, I guess they're set up for ferries from France and Spain, such like, um, because it was very much set up as a, an arrivals terminal um, and then you could tell it was like a, a ferry terminal and then inside there were um, like foreign exchange um, booths and car hire booths and yeah good for Portsmouth I think they're gonna do well and extend and um, we'll be going from Portsmouth on Valiant Lady next spring so that'll be exciting and my I booked, I did some sort of reserving of, um, pay, oh, <laughs> the banging, someone running, up, running upstairs. Um, I did some, like, um, reserving of deposit thing, and I've just had an email from them that that's all added to my account, and there's so much, um, like, future cruise credit. I mean, I, we were going to go inside in April, but the amount of future cruise credit that seems to have dropped, I'm not sure if it's an error or not, but... Um, I will probably get a sea terrace and then I'm going to be there in my rab coat and like a throw and a blanket on that hammock <laughs> getting my money's worth um, in April on the English Channel <laughs> to Bruges and back but um, yeah really looking forward to that really looking forward to be back on board um, a Virgin Voyages ship and really looking forward to taking my husband back on board um, as much as we experienced Scarlet Lady on the world launch, it was so much different and lots of little extras when we were paying passengers. So uh, I'm really looking forward to showing him that and it'll be my birthday month as well. So um, yeah, it'll be a nice celebratory voyage. Uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. <laughs>